Hey there, welcome back to another review, this time of the 2000 comedy, Me, Myself, and Irene. Now, this is a film that I had heard about. I really did not get around to seeing it until recently. And I'm a big fan of Jim Carrey. Um, he's a guy that, in his prime, was just one of the funniest guys I've ever seen. Just absolutely, unbelievably talented and could just make me crack up and laugh so hard and so long without even saying a word because he was such a masterful physical comedian. And that talent is definitely on display here in this film, in Me, Myself, and Irene. Now... I would have to say I liked the film. I didn't love it, though, but I still enjoyed the film. I thought I had some absolutely laugh-out-loud, hilarious moments. And I would have to say it's one of Jim Carrey's last gems. I think the last one he did after this that I thought was on par in terms of the humor, in terms of the genuine manic energy, was Bruce Almighty. And uh, this is definitely the last Farrelly Brothers film that I thought was any good. Because after this, it's just nothing but a downhill slide right down into the shitter. Just right into the fucking outhouse. So anyway, Me, Myself, and Irene was released in 2000, uh, in June, June 23rd, 2000. It had a budget of about $51 million and it made about $149 million worldwide. So it made a decent profit. It's directed by the Farrelly brothers, Peter Farrelly and Bobby Farrelly. And they also helped write the screenplay along with Mike Cerrone. It stars Jim Carrey in a brilliant dual role in one of his best acting performances uh, as this guy named Charlie Bailey Gates who has been a pushover most of his life and because of that he's pushed away feelings that he has you know of anger or uh discontent or contempt you know all these different type of feelings he's pushed inside of him and that's related and that ended up creating this split personality that goes by the name Hank Evans and he's just, he just does everything. You know, he's impulsive. He's a, an asshole. You know, he'll go in and randomly go up to some woman and, and suck on her teat. Uh, kick the baby out of her lap and start sucking on her nipples. I, I mean, it's, it's, this guy is just completely uh, a reckless guy. He's, com he's completely reckless, doesn't give a shit. In a lot of ways, it kind of reminds me of some of the kind of stuff you see from, uh, with Michael Douglas's character in Falling Down. This is a character who's all like, he just goes through life with reckless abandon, doesn't give a shit. He does things that we wish we could do and get away with it. We don't do it because we know we would receive some pretty harsh consequences. But, you know, he's just like a bull in a china shop. He just does everything. And Jim Carrey is a perfect actor for this because he does a great job playing Charlie, who's this sap of a guy. And then he also does an equally job playing Hank, this just demented, crazy asshole. Uh, and uh, I, th I, I like how his Hank is basically his impression of, of uh, Clint Eastwood. And if you've seen some of his early stand-up and seen some of his stuff in, in Living Color, you can definitely see a little bit of that in this. Um, and I didn't mind it because it worked. It worked really well. Um, got a little extra cheese on your taco. You know, it, it's, it's, it's just kind of, you know, just such a nutty character. Um, it's a pretty nutty film as well. You also have Renee Zellweger, who plays Irene P. Waters who is the girl that Charlie falls in love with and he's fighting for her affection along with Hank, which makes for a very intriguing dynamic. I felt that Jim Carrey and Renee Zellweger had some really great chemistry with one another and they were definitely two of the brightest spots in the film. 
And one of the reasons why I like the movie is because of these two. I like their back and forth. And I would have to say Renee Zellweger, for me personally, has not been hotter than she was in this. I mean, she's, I really thought she was, you know, had that girl next door sort of vibe going for her. And it's really sad when you look at Renee now. She's changed so much. I don't know if it's plastic surgery. It's a botched plastic surgery job. I don't know what it is, but she's, it's almost hard to recognize her nowadays. Um, but yeah, and it was also nice to see her in a film like this where it's, it's not like Chicago or some, you know, typical rom-com. It, it's, it's this absolutely brash, in your face, crass comedy. And you really don't see her in that kind of role or in those kind of films, at least not anymore. Chris Cooper is also in this. It's Lieutenant Gurky, who's basically the villain of the film. He does okay, but it's not really much of a role, and it's not really much of a villain. Uh, Chris Cooper is definitely done better. Robert Forster is also in this uh, from Alligator and a few other films as uh, Jim Carrey's character, Charlie's uh, colonel, uh, who uh, works for the Rhode Island State Police. And it's honestly pretty much a nothing role. And it's too bad because Robert Forster is very talented. It just feels like he's kind of wasted here. Richard Jenkins plays an, another guy. Uh, he plays an agent who works for Lieutenant Gurky. He's an FBI guy. He's a villain. Richard Jenkins is usually a villain in almost every single film he's in. I mean, this is a guy, you recognize, you see this guy's face, you recognize him. Like, oh, it's that guy. Yeah, you know, he's, he's, he's in a lot of movies. He was the senator in uh, Kong Skull Island. Who actually, he wasn't really a bad guy in that, so that was actually a nice change of pace. Zen Gesner plays Agent Peterson, who's his other agent guy. Michael Bowman plays uh, Casper, aka Whitey, who's this albino guy, albino character, who is a waiter at some pl some restaurant, and uh, Hank insulted him, and Hank, I guess, befriends him, and then he, he joins... Renee Zellweger and Jim Carrey along for the ride. I didn't care for this character. I didn't care for this, this really, I didn't care for this character at all. Didn't need to be there. It also was a cop out because there's this whole thing where he admits that he killed his family when he's in bed with uh, Jim Carrey's character with Charlie. And then later it's all revealed. Oh no, I wasn't, I was, I, that was, I was just making that up. And then there's like a deleted scene where he had like a butcher knife or something. So I'm like, come on. I mean, what? I don't. Why did you do that? Why did you have a cop out with it? And regardless, it's just a character didn't need to be in the film. It added nothing to the movie. He showed up like over halfway through and was just there. Rob Moran plays a trooper who I think is kind of a, an asshole. Um, you also have a. Uh, Anthony Anderson, who I like, he's in this as one of uh, Jim Carrey's character sons, and and the whole gag is is that they're the sons of this uh, little person named uh, I, I forgot the guy's name. I it's a, it was played by Tony Cox, Shantae. So Shantae was like this limo driver, and in the beginning of the film, Jim Carrey married this girl who was out of his league, and. On his wedding night, pretty much, on their honeymoon, uh, he gets in a little random confrontation with Tony Cox's character, Shantae. And then he reveals to his, his wife that he's a member of Mez Menza, and she's also a member of Menza. And so she falls in love with him, and she has an affair with him, and she ends up having his babies... And she leaves with Shantae and leaves Jim Carrey's character just there to deal with these kids and raise them. And the whole gag is that they're super smart. They talk gangster and everything and swear and look like they're, you know, cast members from the movie Friday, but they're super smart and intelligent. It was just a gag that went on way too long for me. And it was just one of those things that was just like, I get it. I understand. They're super smart. They're intelligent. Uh ha ha. It just I don't I don't know I mean I think I think they ran that joke into the fucking ground. Um, 
And then there's a few cameos, like Shannon Weary uh, plays the breastfeeding mom. I remember her from her softcore porn action movies. Uh, and uh, I believe she also had, I think she might have had a bit role in Ford Fairlane. I'm not 100% sure, though. And, that, and that's pretty much your main cast of the film. It's a pretty solid cast. Uh, Renee Zilberger and Jim Carrey are the main draws. Uh, the other cast members, they they do what they're asked to do, but it's just, I don't know. I, I think this film needed a stronger supporting cast to put it in the same vein or in the same uh, rung or pedestal as some of the other Farrelly Brothers films like Dumb and Dumber or Kingpin. It just doesn't have as strong of a supporting cast. It has a narrator, Rex Allen Jr., and the narration is absolutely completely pointless it's not necessary it's not needed i don't know why it's there it, it just explains shit that you could have explained without a narrator just as easily i guess it's to add some charm to it or something i don't know it just the narration was completely not needed and it kind of hurt the film for me because i'm just like why is a narrator showing up every now and then just stop stop with the narration we don't this is not needed is not necessary shouldn't it's not necessary shut up stop narrating uh it features music by pete yorn and lee scott but majority of the film is not scored by a traditional music score it's scored by music by this uh, from the soundtrack and this is a really standout stellar soundtrack i love the soundtrack for this film i would probably say the film itself is kind of a mixed bag at times, but overall I still enjoy the movie because of Jim Carrey and Renee Zellweger and, you know, it's handful of really hilarious moments, but I would have to say the soundtrack is one of the best things about the film. I, I really love the soundtrack. It's got some really great covers of some old classic songs. It even has a, a cover by the offspring, which is who are one of my favorite bands at the end credits. Cinematography by Mark Irwin, it, you know, it's it's fine for what it is. I mean, it's a comedy. You, you know, comedies aren't usually films that are going to blow you away with cinematography or editing. So all of that is fine. Uh, the film's about 116 minutes. I would say it's a bit too long at times. I mean, it, it stretches out the whole plot where why Jim Carrey's character and Renee Zellweger are on the run. They're trying to... to Renee Zellweger was involved with uh, something to do with Chris Cooper's character and some golf course scandal and something and something. And it, it just really doesn't. It's a really cliched, generic plot. Oh, she's on the run and she's in danger. Her ex-boyfriend is trying to hunt her down because he's in with the bad guy. And it, it's just one of those things where it doesn't seem like there was much thought put into that part of the script. And a lot of the film at a certain point is devoted to that. So it, it hurts the film for me because this could be a, a real classic if you didn't have this really just generic, quite frankly, shitty subplot with uh, we have to have a villain and have to have a reason why they're on the run. And it just didn't work. It just wasn't, it didn't feel like it was something that, like I said, it just it felt like it was rushed it was just something the screenwriters just pulled out of their ass willy-nilly and were just like there we go that's the that's the conflict it really wasn't much of a conflict the bigger conflict was with uh jim carrey's character with charlie and his split personality which is hank and him trying to deal with that and also trying to deal with you know who he is and and trying to find a way to control hank and and all of that and get the girl in the end i mean that that was the that was the main conflict that should have been the main conflict of the film i i think there could have been a different way a different approach that could have had of trying to show jim carrey's character get a chin you know grow some balls stand up for himself uh, and then the way that they did it because it seemed kind of half-assed because near the end he's he's doing that he's trying to save renee zellweger's character from chris cooper and he gets his thumb blown off and ultimately he gets saved by whitey uh, Casper, the albino guy who throws a lawn dart in his and Chris Cooper's back. So that was really what 
You know, he isn't even the one that stops the Chris Cooper. He doesn't really save Renee Zellweger. He doesn't do that. So he was able, he, it just felt kind of, it was just, it was disappointing. It really was. I mean, that all that build up to just thumb getting blown off and, uh, you know, Chris Cooper getting a lawn dart in his back that isn't even thrown or, or, stabbed into his back by Charlie. So it was just like, it was just kind of a throwaway sort of thing. And yeah, I didn't really, I didn't think they handled that very well. And I mean, but the main driving factor, the main focus, the, the, the main selling uh, factor for this is definitely Jim Carrey. He's hilarious. I mean, I miss this Jim Carrey so much. It seems like after this, he started to try to do more dramatic roles. And because he did so much of that, and maybe also because he also got older, he was not able to be the same manic, crazy actor that he was in films like this. Because it's night and day for Jim Carrey and the Farrelly brothers when you compare this with something like Dumb and Dumber 2. I mean, this is a, a masterpiece in comparison to that shit. And it, it's just, it is kind of sad because you're like, man, I miss that Jim Carrey. I miss the Jim Carrey who's able to just make all these just ridiculous faces. I mean, the scene where he's the medicine that he's taking to try to suppress his split personality gives him what he likes to call cotton mouth. And there's a scene in the film where he's just got his teeth sticking out and he's just, like, oh, it's just it's over exaggerated cotton mouth cotton mouth and it's hilarious and it reminded me a little bit of his fire marshal bill character and and that put a smile on my face and there there are and you know it's not only just that i mean the scene with the cow where he's just beating the shit at this he finds that he and renee zellweger they find this cow on the side of the road and the cow looks like it's dead and so he's trying to move it off the road but then it's still alive, so he's trying to put it out out of its misery, but it doesn't seem to be working. So he's like pop, he's point, he's pointing his gun at the cow and shooting at it like multiple times at point blank range, and it's still alive. And so he just grabs the cow and starts trying to strangle the life out of it, and then he like sticks his two fingers into its nostrils and is like, uh, you know, you're gonna go to a better place. And that was pretty funny. And uh, it was a, it was it was nice to see. It was a practical effect. It, it was a practical uh, a mechanical cow that they used. And then the stuff with uh, you know uh, his character Hank. I mean the the whole scene when he when you first see Hank. I love, love that scene. He this this asshole guy at this barber shop is is telling is not wanting to move his car, and so he asked Charlie to do it. And so Hank ends up doing it in an epic grand fashion and drives the car right through the front window of the barber shop. And the guy's name is Dick. So he's like, hey, Dick, here's your car. Uh, the the uh, there, There's this little girl who earlier was like screaming at Charlie and was trying to tell her to get out of the street. And and he grabs the girl and starts dunk, dunking her in this fountain and drowning her. It's fucked up, but it's funny. Uh, then, then that's where you have that scene where he kicks this woman's baby, takes this woman's baby out, not really kick the baby, but he, he replaces his mouth and his lips for the baby's lips while this woman is breastfeeding, played by Shannon Reary, and then he's just like sucking on her tit and she's looking at him like, ah, you know, and then it's just, it's just absolutely absurd and off the wall and crazy, but it's 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 pretty funny um yeah it's 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 really entertaining to see the the dynamic you know with hank and then the whole back and forth sort of stuff where uh renee zellweger will be dealing with hank and kicks hank in the balls for being a lecherous prick and then because then all of a sudden charlie would come back and 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 she'd feel bad and it's just there, there is a lot to like about me, myself, and Irene. It's a great idea. It's an absolutely fantastic concept. I love the idea of this, of, of dealing with this main character played by Jim Carrey, who's this, uh, uh, he looks like a, a, a Mountie, but I mean, I guess that's kind of how it is with the Rhode Island State Police. So he's this Rhode Island State Trooper who's been 
uh, just stepped on, kicked on, pissed on his whole life. And, you know, he just has to deal with this multiple personality and uh, try to get the girl that he's in love with uh, in Renee Zellweger. And hopefully everything works out and he's able to get control uh, of his life again. It was a character you rooted for. And and uh, yeah, it was it was a it was a fun flick. It was a fun movie. Um with comedies also it's kind of they're kind of hard to review because it's like what you might think is funny another person might not i can see why some people might be turned off by some of the crass humor um at times it did feel like it got a little bit too much for me because it just felt like it was just excessive but then there were other times where you know it's just simple stuff that just kept cracking me up like when he got kicked in the face by uh, renee zellweger when when uh charlie was uh he was Hank at the time and he was trying to get Renee Zellweger to, to beat him up so they can get some quick money. She kicks him in the face and he falls down this hill. And so now he's got like a broken nose and like a neck brace. And it was just the, the noises that his nose kept making that just kept cracking me up because it sounded like a squeaky toy, like a, like a dog squeak toy. And, and, you know, and it was just like this con and, and just it really added to uh, the, the scene and just made it impossible not to laugh when you're when they're they're talking. He's trying to be serious with her and he's got this just squeak, you know, this is it's a squeaky noise coming out of his nose. So that was a nice, you know, gag, I thought. And so, I mean, there's there's a there's quite a few, you know, there's some fun memorable, fun, nice lines. Um I, I can't really recall a lot of them off the top of my head because I've only seen the film once, but I can see why people, you know, quote the film. I, I, I like the different nicknames and stuff that uh, Hank comes up with for uh, Renee Zellweger. You know, you know Renee Zellweger's character, you know, stuff like, listen up, cheese tits, <laughs> you know, or, or, you know, it's just like... You know, so, the, so, you know, there's some, you know, cheesy tits. Listen up, cheesy tits. <laughs> So, uh, you know, the, the, it, there's there's a lot of fun to be had with this film. But I would say story-wise, plot-wise, it's a bit lacking. The, the, the conflict, in my opinion, pretty much sucked. And it brought the film down a little bit. And there were times with the humor where they kind of drove certain jokes into the ground far too many times for my liking. But overall, though, I still enjoyed the film. I would recommend it if you haven't seen it yet especially if you're a fan of Jim Carrey. And I really don't know what else to say about the film, except if I was going to rate it out of five stars. I give it three and a half out of five stars. It's not one of my favorites, but it's still a film I enjoyed, I had fun with, and it's still a comedy that I ultimately liked. And it really did represent the last hurrah for the Farrelly brothers, sadly, because it's crazy how much they fell off a cliff after this into a giant pool of shit and piss it's just unbelievable you, you can't you watch this film and it has some issues but you see the same reasons why they were so well sought after by uh producers and, and why audiences like their films and it just seems like they completely lost that after this movie shit like the heartbreak kid came out after me myself and irene uh the three stooges movie uh that fucking movie with Owen Wilson and uh, I think what the fuck was the name of that movie Hall Pass I think it was Owen Wilson was it Luke Wilson I think it was Luke Wilson actually I don't think it was Owen Wilson yeah I mean after this it was Stuck on You uh, uh, Fever Pitch Osmosis Jones Shallow Howl uh, The Ringer I mean, well, they didn't really direct that, but I mean, the Heartbreak Kid Hall Pass, that's what it was, Hall Pass, and it was Owen Wilson. So, yeah, it was just a really gigantic fall from grace. But anyway, um, yeah, those are my thoughts on me, myself, and Irene. Thanks for watching, and as always, I will see you guys later. See ya.